all the information. So let me get right into some of the details of the lyric. Now, as I mentioned, this is Cadillac's first offering into the all electric market space with the Lyric, as we saw it debut about a year or so ago by General Motors. And it's a mid size luxury crossover SUV. So it meets that segment. If you can compare it to the Model Y, the Audi e tron, I would say the BMW iX, and a bunch of others that are in that segment. So it's not the compact SUV, but the mid size SUV. And of course, it is based on GM's Altium platform, which is their go forward strategy for electrification of their vehicles as they spool up that up. Now this vehicle behind me is a pre-production and it is the debut edition. The debut edition will be a single motor rear wheel drive variant offered in two colors. The silver that you can see, uh, silver and also a black uh, coloring scheme. Dual motor options will be available later on most likely around the first quarter of 2023. All right, so again, this is a pre-production model. A lot of the features and functions aren't available on this model, so I'll give you, I'll show you what I can um, based on that. Let's start with the design, though. This is, you know, it has the DNA of Cadillac design, obviously, as you can see, but this is GM and Cadillac's vision of kind of moving beyond the internal combustion vehicle segment into the new world of electrification. So it's got a nice mix of technology, of still the, um, that design language that is Cadillac, so when you look at it, you, you get that feeling and you know that this is a Cadillac product, but it's much more modern for the times and futuristic as well at the same, uh, same point. So GM says that this is a brave design, it's an artful integration of technology as well, and you can see that by looking at it. Now from a length and width of this product, um, if you can compare it pretty close to a Tesla Model X, it's slightly less in length and slightly less in, in uh, width, uh, but it does have a longer wheelbase. So what that's going to transform to with this skateboard platform is a really nice solid ride. Nice ride quality with a low center of gravity, giving it good handling characteristics. And from Cadillac's lineup, this sizing would fit between the X-T5 and the X-T6 is my understanding. So you've got a, you'll see when I do some interior shots here and sit in it that you'll get a sense of space. It is very spacey. And because again of that skateboard platform, you're able to push elements to the rear, elements to forward to give much more space for the cabin occupants. So one of the cool features about this is the LED light presentation. As you can see, when you walk up with the key fob, it will unlock the doors and magically light up, welcoming you to the vehicle, also including a Cadillac icon and logo that lights up uh, behind the driver's dash there. Pretty cool stuff, especially if you're looking for it in a parking lot, but you know, it's very, very lovely, so it'd be easy to find. So as part of the presentation lighting, um, when you walk up to the vehicle, of course, the front ones, but you have some rear activation as well, as you can see in these LEDs that do a nice pattern. Really like the looks of these lines. Again, futuristic, modern, yet you can see with the edges and that kind of squarish a little bit that it really maintains that Cadillac DNA. Now, I just wanted to talk about this rear spoiler. It is a functioning rear spoiler in the fact that it's vented, so air will pass underneath it. Now, as you notice, there's no rear wiper blade on this hatch, and that seems to be a trend from a lot of the manufacturers, Ionic 5, I believe the EV6 from Kia, and possibly the uh, GV60 from Genesis, and on and on. It seems to be a trend that they're putting these active rear spoilers for airflow to, to be able to um, basically clean the rear windshield or the rear glass by the force of the wind as you're driving, and that's what this is designed to do. Airflow will come down, get accelerated, through these uh, narrow openings and push uh, uh, all the moisture and stuff off of the glass. So in theory, sounds good. In practice, we'll have to see. I commented that on the Ionic 5 when I was down there that we're not sure how that's gonna hold up to our Canadian or Northern climate situations where after a couple of days of a snowfall and there's salt and dirt on, and sand on the road and that gets kicked up in a melting or something like that to actually dirty the screen versus um, just moisture coming off. I have to see how that works in reality, but I'm sure the engineers are much smarter than I am and they've thought about this stuff. Now when you're talking EVs, you're talking aerodynamics to add to efficiency, so it's all pretty important in EVs. Now, even little things like door handles, of course. Most manufacturers are now going to flush door handles. No difference here with uh, the Lyric, as you can see, nice flush door handles. When you want to open the door, you just touch the button and the door pops open.
Now, as I mentioned, this is based on GM's Altium platform. Now, this debut edition will be a rear-wheel drive single motor. It's going to be pretty, though, powerful, pumping out about 340 horsepower from this motor, about 325 pound-feet of torque, so it'll certainly get it moving. It has a 100 kilowatt-hour battery pack, so GM estimates an EPA range of 300 miles plus. We don't have an exact figure yet, which translates to about 482 plus kilometers, pushing that 500 kilometer mark, which is awesome. Now, there will be a dual motor variant available later on. My understanding is it should be coming in the first quarter of 2023 for those who want all wheel drive. But, you know, I'm sure the rear wheel drive will be lots of fun to drive. Now, because this is a pre production motor, the charge port won't open, but this is where it is. It's located on the front uh, quarter panel for the driver's side. To open it, you would open it from inside uh, to activate it, or you push the Cadillac icon and it will power it down. Now, this will support it has a pretty fast um, internal charger capable of up to 19.2 kilowatts, and that's pretty fast. You could hook that up to an 80 amp service to get the full power draw. That's even faster than the Model 3 pulls, so uh, it'll be interesting to see how that works in real life. It does support DC fast charging as well, up to 190 kilowatts. So we don't have any charging curves available for this yet, but I'm sure that once we see a few of these on the road later this year, there'll be some people that'll do that and uh, We'll see how it charges over time, but GM does claim that in 30 minutes you can get about 200 miles, um, which is pretty good. Now on this vehicle, there is no front because there's a lot of internal components, especially that bigger uh, built-in charger that's on here. So there is no front offering for this vehicle. But when I take you around to the back and see the interior space, you'll see that there's enough space to uh, do what you need to do with this vehicle. All right, so as I said about storage space, there's no front, uh, up front of course, but there is a nice size boot. And to open it, you can either use your remote or an internal button or press the Cadillac icon here. I'm gonna press it a little harder, there we go. And it's a power lift gate, of course. A good size boot has about 28 cubic feet of cargo space from the second row back. Put the second rows down, that increases uh, more than double to 60.8 cubic feet. So enough to get a good size amount of luggage, some stuff if you're going to Lowe's or Home Depot or Costco or something to fill that up. I like the, the lift, seems to be pretty low, just slightly above my knees. So if you're bringing parcels from the grocery store, you wanna lift them in, you can certainly do that has minimal storage underneath. In fact, it's actually a pretty good bay. You'll see here on these pictures. It's actually pretty deep, so you can store your charging cable, store uh, car accessories, whatever you want from that, your windshield washer fluid and stuff. So actually, that's one of the deeper designs that we've seen in the North American vehicles, because a lot of people compare the trunk space to like the Tesla Model 3, Tesla Model Y, of course, the S and the X that had that deep um, uh, holes or that deep uh, caverns uh, in the trunks, of course, because we have no gas tank, we have no transmission tunnel, uh, differential, things like that. So the space is available to do that. And I'm glad to see that GM's taken advantage of that uh, concept. Now to fold the rear seats down, there are two buttons here that will do it uh, automatically in the pre-production vehicle. They're not activated, but it will. There's also a slight decline to the rear seat, so you will be able to move them, I think probably up to about an eight or 10 degree pitch. So if you want to recline a little bit more in the back seat, get more comfortable, you'll be able to do that. And this is a traditional 60-40 rear split. So, you know, depending on what side you want to put things on, uh, it's nice. So a good amount of size, I like the high lift. And then you, of course you have your power button to close it. So now the interior in the Lyric is a very nice place to be, very comfortable, supportive seats, just kind of playing around a little bit. You've got your seat controls on the door, you've got all your, your traditional functions where you normally would see them. Now this dash I can't really play around with, but because it is a pre-production, so not all the menus are working and everything is set up, but it's a nice 33 inch display. You've got two sections, you've got your driver's binnacle section and then your infotainment all combined together in a beautiful sweeping display very easy to see. I like that it's low, so it doesn't impede any of the roof lines and any of the visibility out of the vehicle. Uh, it's very nice. The rear view mirror, obviously well placed with uh, the cameras that are in front of that, your controls up top for all of that stuff. Um, very nice steering wheel design, you know, typical GM uh, showing the green light because these vehicles will come with the Super Cruise as standard. 
Um, and as you can see um, by um, by the B-roll that I'm showing and some of the video that I'm taking here, this is a very nicely laid out uh, dash design. Everything's within super easy reach. I like the mix of buttons. Some of these steering wheel controls are haptic feedback. Not a huge fan of haptic, but if they're done right, and uh, you know, like on the Bolt and some of the others where they had similar functionality, they were pretty easy. So I'll give them the benefit of the doubt and say that they're really good. I do like the buttons for the HVAC. Again, everything's clearly marked, easy to understand. No menus you have to scroll through to actually turn on the fan or turn down the heat or anything like that. So I do like that. Again, a very beautiful display. Binnacle will have all different kinds of menus and options to show uh, information, energy, uh, consumption, uh, navigation, all that kind of stuff. Um, Google, um, Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, standard functionality here. I believe it'll be wireless connectivity as well with that, so you can integrate that if you'd like. Uh, but just everything is really clean, neat, and tidy on this. You do have paddle shifter here on the left side for the regen, so you can regen on the go, which is a feature that GM has on their Bolt products as an example. If you want to all of a sudden add regen and come to a stop, uh, this button will do that to you. Um, I believe it does have different regen settings as well that will allow for one pedal driving and various uh, degrees of sensitivity for the brake regeneration. Now, the center console is very nice and plush and comfortable. I'm one to always try to rest my arm on this while I'm driving. Uh, it's got a really nice feature, big cup holders, easy to see. Got different uh, features here as well with the uh, menu button. You can change menu selections and things with the uh, the Cadillac um, control here, the wheel control, things like mute, things like answer a call, go back on the menu. So it's nice that once you learn this system, it becomes muscle memory to you, then you can change things and interact with the display without really having to take your eyes off the road uh, or ever so slightly. And that you know, distracted driver is always a problem when you produce really, really beautiful front displays with a lot of functionality. Sometimes you get distracted by all the information and the data that you can see on these things. So it is nice to have some simplified controls that are within easy reach. But you know, to highlight the interior, it's a premium interior, right? This is a Cadillac. It's got a nice feel to it, nice build quality. Even though this is a pre-production model, uh, it's very nicely laid out. I don't see any glaring gaps or anything like that. No squeaks and rattles from me bumping around in the vehicle. So this feels like a really nice top-end product. Um, you can see that it's got this nice modern design with a good use of materials. As I mentioned, well laid out, easy within reach. And again, everything driver focused. So you don't necessarily have to have a lot of things that are passenger focused, but you know, passengers could interact with this side. Uh, quite easily here within reach of that system. There is some storage as well. As you can see, there's a small tray that pops out here um, to allow for a little bit of storage, phone or uh, coins, you know, for, for the dry, coffee drive throughs whatever you want to put in there. It's a nice uh, storage option. There is, of course, uh, a glove box that's there. And you have this nice deep storage well uh, uh, as well. Now, one, a lot of people are doing these storage wheels. This is not a movable console, but Sometimes they're hard to put stuff into, hard to reach underneath. This is nice and open. You've got a USB-C port, nice accessibility. So you want to put stuff down there. You want to put a small, you know, handbag or something like that down there. Certainly lots of room to do that. And you've got a decent size amount of storage here with some USB ports and 12 volt and your, your normal things. Again, just a very, very nice place to be, especially when you're in long drives. All right, so rear seat, of course, I'm going to get in, see how it uh, feels, give you my uh, take on easy in and out and headroom, legroom. So yeah, extremely easy to get in and out of. I like you sit a little higher, of course, so it's easy to slide in. And I'm sitting in and even with the roof, I've got well over a fist of head headroom. I'm about five, six, five, seven. Uh, lots of legroom. I haven't really adjusted the front seat, but there's lots of room here. Very, very comfortable environment. Certainly easy to sit for. Uh, you can sit five quite comfortably, I believe, for longer trips. Love the glass. It really shows an openness to the, to the whole entire interior here of the vehicle. Premium materials, nice use of uh, stitching and fabric. These are, I guess, a type of leather. Everything, all the controls, easy to reach. You have your rear, some rear climate directional controls. USB charging and it's 110 volt plug as well, which is nice if you're gonna do some laptop work want to plug in, you'll be able to do that.
Well, I hope you enjoyed some of the facts and figures and a quick look at this beautiful, lovely Cadillac Lyric here. Uh, that's actually going to be start deliveries next month in March of uh, this year and in Canada sometime after the summertime or the fall we should start seeing these hit showrooms and driveways which is great. As I mentioned the all-wheel drive version should be coming earlier. Now one other thing about this, this you can tow with this vehicle. It has a tow rating of about up to 3,500 3, pounds and I believe that that's with the rear wheel drive so you might even get a little bit more on the all-wheel drive. Very good. So very capable, luxurious, well-built solid um, offering in that mid-size SUV marketplace. I love the daring design. You know, it's really, really lovely. It looks better in real life, folks, than it does on camera. So once you see some of these in showrooms that are on the road, you're really going to enjoy looking at this vehicle. But there is competition. I've got the Tesla Model Y, as I mentioned. You've got the Audi e-tron. You've got the BMW iX. I guess I would put it up against this. Maybe the Mercedes-Benz EQA. That might be slightly smaller. And there are others, you know, some other um, uh, manufacturers that are having very similar vehicles in this size and class. But as starting price of $59,900 US or $69,898, excuse me, Canadian, just under 70 grand, of course, won't qualify for the federal rebate. However, what you see on this vehicle is what you get for that price. With the exception of these rims, these are 22 inch rims, it'll be 20 inches standard. Otherwise, everything else is completely standard on this vehicle. So for that price point, this is really going to be a winner, especially with the range, good fast charging. Again, we'll see how it is on that charging curve. And, but the capability to haul people in comfort, haul stuff in comfort, long drives, with the Super Cruise technology, of course, which basically is the equivalent to a Tesla's autopilot, keeps you in the lane, uh, lane changing functions, uh, navigate start to finish almost, on, of course, routes that are mapped by GM. So in closing, again, I want to thank GM for inviting me here to the, to the um, Cadillac Live Center. I had to remember what that name and the secret undisclosed location. Uh, I want to thank them for having me out to have this quick look at the Lyric, which is really a stunning vehicle. and I can't wait to actually get one to drive sometime in the near future. So again, thanks very much for watching. Oh, do I recommend this? Hey, you guys know that. I'm giving this two thumbs up because it's got a lot of pluses, good price point, a lot of capabilities. Absolutely, if you're in the market for a mid-size luxury SUV, you can put a reservation in, get on the waiting list. Uh, you may or may not be getting delivery on this debut edition this year. I'm not sure how many they're cranking out, but this will be coming from a Spring Hill, Tennessee plant in the U.S. So we should be able to see these in Canada, like I said, in the fall. So thanks very much for tuning in. That's it for this episode. I appreciate it. If you haven't subscribed again on YouTube, please do so. Hit that bell for notifications. Thank you for watching. See you in the next video.